CCP released a new expansion for Eve Online, and it includes a lot of cool and exciting changes, except for Marauder Story Guys, including new tier 2 dreads, cheaper capitals, and easier to hold PI. If you want to find out everything important that did change and is going to change, go ahead and watch this video as we will take a deep dive into all the changes that did happen. Also, there's a giveaway at the end of this video, so go watch it till the end if you want to find out how to join and have a chance at winning one of three skins where you're able to choose between either a Vargas skin or a Stratio skin. But playing EVE alone sucks. So if you want to take part in an awesome community, fly fun chips, make something ISK and have genuinely a good time with constantly people around you to hang out with. So come and join Suspect today and fight under the banner of our great supreme leader, me. So come and join our Discord today. Anyway, on with the video. Hey guys, it's me, i41. So today we're taking a look at all the changes that the new expansion CCP release brought to us. And we're starting with maybe the most unnoticed, but very much free, very huge, important industry changes. With the last one being the one a lot of capital pilots have very much waited for. The first thing is that industry indexes had the old modifiers removed. What does that actually mean? Before this, certain systems and NullSec had lower facility fees because of old modifiers and old calculations. But those have been removed. On the one hand, this should make all systems an even playing field. But what this means for bigger groups is that you can't anymore just stack all your industry into one system, but have to spread it out with many industry stations over many systems to prevent the industry fees from potentially going up by a factor of four. The second change happening is big for station owners. The tax paid to NPCs for station utilities used, both market and industry, is reduced to 0.25%, meaning even if you adjust a higher tax rate now, it will be more money going directly to the station owner and less disappearing as an ISK sink. The third big change CCP is making to industry is very big. Both capitals and super capitals are becoming effectively 30% cheaper due to readjusted blueprints, mainly making capital components quite a bit cheaper, but also T1 PI has become 50% smaller in volume, making not only producing capital modules easier, but also PI life significantly easier. So what do those capital changes effectively mean? Where dreadnoughts before costed around 4 billion to build, they will now cost roughly 2.8 billion. Same goes for all capitals, including super capitals, with super carriers costing after this change maybe roughly 38 billion. So if you want to get a super capital, now's the time. If you got one before this patch, I guess you have to cope with reality that sometimes you can't know what happens later down the road. And this leads us straight to the next big change happening to gameplay. Tier 2 dreads are here. And tier 2 dreads are actually looking very much very cool. The biggest feature of them obviously being the fact that they can carry a doomsday weapon. That doomsday, if it does hit, doesn't do a ton of damage to small stuff, but it has good application against capital ships and has the exact same energy neutralizing effect as a titan lance, meaning anything within 10 kilometers of them loses a lot of capacitor. However, the bigger thing is, if you are hit by said doomsday, you are all of a sudden unable to dock, jump a gate or tower, as well as have remote repairs you receive reduced by 50%, and that for a whole minute. If that is actually gonna be a big impactful change and interesting gameplay mechanic, we will have to see depending on how people will use it. But there's a total of 4 tier 2 dreads added to the game. The Vile Run, Vile, Vile Raven, Vile, uh, the Minimata one, receiving an active tank and range bonus, as well as looking mighty cool in that white paint drop. The Bane for the Amar, sporting a bonus to missile application and damage per hit, meaning the missiles cycle relatively slow but do a very high alpha damage. Also it has maybe the best tier 2 resist out of all the dreads here, with having almost equal resist all the way. The Karura, the, the Kaldari one, has a massive bonus to hybrid turret range and tracking. And the Hubris, my personal favorite one, having an active repair bonus, a rate of fire bonus for more damage, and a hull tank bonus on top of that, making it get massive silly hull HP. I do like that one quite a bit. Statwise, they are basically the same as tier 1 dreads, but obviously they have the added benefit of a super tackle lance, which might become the horror of jump freighter pilots trying to enter high sec. Cost wise, they actually aren't crazy, 
as they will most likely cost about 8 to 9 billion. However, you will need a 3 billion esque skill book for Lancer Dreadnoughts, as well as one of the racial Dreadnought skills to level 5 to actually fly the Attack 2 Dreadnought. That is quite a steep skill requirement. With a low is cost but very high skill requirements, it most likely isn't gonna see too many of those around, but groups that already have Dreadnought piles of maximum skills are gonna use them, maybe. But we have to see how they will actually turn out as the Doomsday is the most deciding factor. And the new range might be quite big, as it does take 25% of the capacitor of a capital ship close by to it. However, the last ship temp that could have changed is the Marauder, specifically the Bastion module, as it now has a 1 minute cycle time as well as no EVO resistance. All of them also had changes to their slot layout and bonuses, you can see a full list of those on the screen right now. Specifically that EVO resistance change will most likely make them not the greatest anymore for ratting, which is a change that might not be fully intended. And while the 1 minute cycle time makes it a bit harder to just commit them and get out quickly, it at least makes it so when you deploy a Marauder, you do have to use it and you can't just escape straight away. It makes them also less usable as mainline DPS ship, as getting out of Bastion before your buffer tank runs out is not that easy anymore. But I think the EVO resistant change is the biggest one out of all of them here. But with the ship changes out of the way, we're now coming to the three big changes that are happening for all of you corporation CEOs. The first one is the addition of a corporation goal page, allowing you to make up arbitrary insane goals to make your members slave away at your next titan, or have insane goals, maybe it's just me having insane goals. The second, maybe even bigger change, is the addition of an LP tax. An LP tax that can be used to generate additional income streams for your corp. Ever wanted to use Faction Warfare as a valid income source? Or make a corp revenue based purely on level 5 missions or incursions? Well, now you can, very much so. But the last change, but maybe the coolest addition, is structure skins. Corps can now use their collected ever marks to buy structure skins. More specifically, make their own ones in a station designer. So ever wanted a pink keepsa skin? I did and now I can have it. Those structure skins however are also bought with licenses for a duration of time. 30 days, 90 days or 180 days. Meaning once that runs out, you will have to again spend ever marks to extend those skins. But this is a very big expansion. It adds maybe only a few ships and only very few people will use those new ships. But a few of them, especially the Bane of its choosable damage type, might be very useful. But the Doomsday might be in itself already a big game changer for logistics. And especially dreadful, no pun intended, for super capital moveups as it prevents them from tavering or jump freighters from jumping gates. As jump freighters do in fact have to take gates into high sec as they can't sign onto high sec. What those changes will actually do has to be seen. But it is quite a big patch. And lower capital prices in themselves are already awesome. And having Marauders be more countable by Eivor is amazing as well as long as you fight against them. But I'm curious, what is your opinion on the patch? I'm excited to hear what you think, but also worried about the conse possible consequences for jump freighters. Also, to enter the giveaway, make sure to type exclamation Varga in the comments with your opinion on the patch, as well as your Discord name attached to it. Anyway, this is all from me, I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, Remember to leave a like, subscribe and maybe even check out my Patreon if you do want to support me financially as it is a big help to me. Anyway, see you next time.